right now. If you go into OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace or even eBay, there are a lot of people selling vintage audio products. Oftentimes the items don't sell, they're eventually placed on the curb for garbage collection. This is sad because although some of those items are almost 100 years old, they represent some of the best finished carpentry and design ever seen. Some YouTubers have made videos about restoring old electronics, but in most cases, they either focus on restoring the wood while converting the product to something completely different like a glorified shelf, or they restore the electronics to working condition even though we mostly get our music through streaming these days. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how you can restore your vintage audio with modern electronics for a very low cost. Let's go! So one of the first things you want to do is to harvest good parts, preferably for free or for a very small amount. Take for example this old Vizio Plasma TV from the early 2000s. Back then TVs were slim but not thin like today's TVs and sound bars weren't that popular yet. So the speakers in the TV had to be good because someone watching the TV could potentially be sitting on the other side of the room. This TV for example I found on OfferUp and it was available for free. But you know the saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Now because this person was local I didn't have to drive too far and as soon as I got home I parked beside the community dumpster, opened the TV and pulled the speakers out. As you can see these speakers come mounted in a nice sealed housing and instead of one speaker doing all the work we have a tweeter here to handle the high frequencies as well as a small woofer to handle the mid and low frequencies. I also got another plasma TV but I had to pay 20 bucks, that's $20 for those of you who don't speak American English. But I was more than happy to pay the 20 bucks because I knew that being a Panasonic plasma TV, the speakers would be high quality. I was not wrong, but as you can see here, the surrounds and the speakers were completely disintegrated. But what do I mean by surrounds? Let me explain. This is a cross section of a typical speaker. Uh, without getting too technical, when the electrical signal comes in from your speaker wires, it causes this speaker cone to move. When the speaker cone moves, it pushes air and that is what produces sound. The bigger the cone, the more air it pushes and that translates to greater coverage. However, in order for the speaker to produce good sound, it needs to move back and forth several times at the same frequencies as the instruments or the voices in the song. For this reason, something is needed to pull the cone back into position each time the electrical signal pushes it forward. That's the job of the surround or the suspension. This black semicircular strip that is labeled number 3 in the diagram. The surround also serves a second purpose. As you can see, the inner part of the surround or suspension is secured to the cone, which is labeled with the number 4. The outer part of the surround is secured to the frame of the speaker. This is done in such a way that the cone is properly centered. If it were not properly centered, instead of moving in a straight line in and out, it would instead move at an angle and this would cause a coil labeled as 2 in the diagram to rub against the magnet. Typically the surround or suspension is made of a rubbery synthetic material. Plasma TVs generate a lot of heat, so each time they turn the TV on the surround or suspension would heat up. Once the TV is turned off the surround would get cold again. After many years of going through the constant cycle of hot and cold, the rubbery synthetic material of the surround crystallized and fell apart. The speakers in the Vizio Plasma TV however did not have that problem because they are mounted in the housing so they were more influenced by the cooler temperature inside the room. Now normally changing the surrounds or suspension is a simple task, just order a pair off Amazon. However, speakers are typically circular in shape. so. Rectangular speakers are basically a custom design, but don't worry, I'll show you how to overcome that hurdle. Now I had an old cotton shirt lying around that I was not using anymore because it was stained by a leaky pen. So I cut off one of the sleeves from that shirt and then used the frame of the speaker to trace a new surround in the fabric, after which I cut out the trace which would become my new surround or suspension. Prior to doing the tracing I used a craft knife to carefully remove the frame. Then I measured the distance carefully to make sure that the new surround wouldn't overlap too much with the cone. The next step was to add some adhesive to the cone as well as the frame. Some surround kits come with a special adhesive for this, but since I was making my own surround I decided to use wood glue which is very forgiving due to the relatively long drying time. After trimming my cotton surround to get a perfect fit on the cone, I put the frame back together with more wood glue and then left it overnight to dry. 
After that, I did some more trimming of the excess material and soon my speakers were fixed. However, I did not plan to leave my speakers like this. The next thing I'm adding here is a black puff paint. Black, obviously, to get a uniform color in a speaker and puff paint because it dries to a rubbery feel and consistency. Like I mentioned before, you want your surround or suspension to be rubbery because that is what will allow your speaker cone to return to its original position after each movement. After painting the surround with puff paint, I gave it 24 hours to dry and cure properly and then it was time to test it. Check this out. Now for the size radio these the things are going into, I think it's just perfect. It's just perfect. You, you don't need anything else. I mean, these are just fine for this application. I was very proud of myself for that repair, although I don't think the microphone on my webcam does it any justice. The bass is tight and the high end is also very good with no distortion. This is not something I'm going to stick in a huge radio, so for this application, these speakers are perfect. But let's move on to another speaker I got for free. This is a 6.5 inch Pioneer speaker. It's a marine rated speaker designed to be used on a boat. However, it was being used in a sauna, so it was no surprise that the surround had gone bad. After disassembling and removing the remnants of the old surround from the frame, I also spent time trimming off old surround that was still stuck to the cone. As much as possible, try and clean up the old glue with rubbing alcohol. If you use something stronger, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area or have a fan pulling the fumes away. And make sure that you clean up the adhesive remover thoroughly before adding new adhesive. Now I did notice a crack in part of this cone. Didn't have much to do with the cone itself, just the aesthetics, so I used some wood glue to fix that. Since I was not able to completely remove the old adhesive, I used some sandpaper to rough up the surface so that the new adhesive would hold. Now I was ready to add the new surround that I had ordered off Amazon. Putting the surround on was very challenging because the old adhesive was still heavy in some spots and that's why you can see me pushing the cone several times to make sure that there was proper alignment and that the coil was not rubbing against the magnet. Now I have to admit I did make a few rookie mistakes while doing the speaker, mainly because I got impatient and rushed things. But after learning to kiss, no not that kiss, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple and safe. I re-glued and re-centered the surround and then gave it 24 hours to cure and then did another test. Having passed the test, it was now time to add some puff paint to cover these glue stains. Now this is not a speaker that people are going to see so I'm not too concerned about how tacky it might look with all those glue and paint stains. The important thing is the sound and considering that I got the speaker for free, this repair was worth it. Another thing that I did is that since the cone on the speaker has had gotten a little brittle, I figured to myself that, you know, in time, it's probably going to fall apart. So I did go ahead and I added some puff paint to the entire cone. And once that dried, it would just hold those fibers together and make it that much stronger, give it a few more years of life. Not a few more years, but many more years of life. Sometimes people have very good speaker boxes, but they start sounding terrible because the surround goes bad and the coil begins to rub against the magnet. Changing the surround or suspension is an easy fix. Finding the correct surround or suspension is not hard at all. Just look up your speaker's model number online to find the specs. If it's a 6.5 inch speaker like this one, just go to Amazon and type in 6.5 inch speaker surround. If you can't find the model number, just use a ruler to measure across from edge to edge. Based on that measurement, you can search for the correct surround. There's a lot of old but good stuff out there that you can restore for relatively low cost and given the cost of living today, especially housing, who doesn't want to save a few bucks? I've provided some useful links in the description below to the items I use as well as some useful search links. Perhaps you're in college or you're moving out of your parents home to your own place. Maybe you've been on your own for a while and you simply want a nice sound system without having to spend too much on an ultra modern system. There's a lot of good, even high quality stuff out there that can be restored for relatively small cost. In the next episode, I'll dive a bit more into how to choose the right stuff to buy and how to restore them to the point where you can use them or sell them. Stay tuned.